Okay, I, just two other things here. I, we got a couple calls. I just want you to be aware and we're looking into how we do this, but we got some calls about practice on snowboards last week. I know a couple of you got calls on that too, so looking at what's in our athletic handbooks and how we're back to uh, we, we didn't have we didn't have a game, the game was but we did have some practice that took place, and um, we actually have language that is a little conflicting between the coaches' athletic game and the students' athletic game. So we'll get that straight out. Uh, and the, the last thing I wanted to do you know, on behalf of Todd, myself, and all of our employees here in the district is just thank you for what you do as the board. Uh, this is board appreciation month. January, and so we just want to thank you for all of your efforts and you know, we look forward to working with you guys. So thank you for giving up your time. I know this is a lot of time and energy that you give um, for something that you believe in passionately, and, and we do appreciate that. It's not an easy task to be the ones faced with decisions. Okay, uh, the education report. These first three that I'm going to get into here, these are contracts with students that are in other school districts that have special special needs. Uh, recommend to approve the contract for children with disabilities, open enrollment agreement for excess cost with following boards of education for educational purposes for the 2011-12 school year. Pursuant to sections 3313.981 and 3323.14 of the Ohio Revised Code and Rule 3301-4802-F. Okay. We, we have two, two students in Southeast. Okay. And that's what the two is for. Okay. okay, I can have a motion to approve the contract for children with disabilities open enrollment agreement for excess costs with the following boards of education for educational purposes for the 2011-12 school year pursuant to the Ohio Revised Code. So moved. Second. Second. Any questions or comments? Roll call. Mr. Terry? Yes. We'll see? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Fletcher? Yes. Jones? Yes. Motion passes. Recommend to approve the contract for handicapped pupil cooperative attending class of another district other than the parents' district of residence pursuant to sections 3327.04, of the Ohio Revised Code with the Revenge School District for the 2011-12 school year. I can have a motion to approve the contract for handicapped people cooperative pursuant to the um, sections listed of the Ohio Revised Code with the Ravenna School District for the 2011-12 school year. So moved. Second. Second. Okay. Any questions or comments? Uh, these are unfunded mandates, correct? Um, these, well, not necessarily. The, the first one are students that open a road to another district and they're allowed to build back access costs to our district for home residents. Uh, the second one here, this student has been attending Ravenna because of the program that he's in. And so we we have to, through his IEP, meet his needs at all to the home. So in a way, yeah, a lot of this problem is the IEP. This one is because we don't provide Service. What he the services that he needs for this. Two and three are dealing with services that a kid needs to be on And these one. are the things that you said that you're looking in to see if we can provide so we can even want to Yeah, we've looked into that last year. Um, one of the things that we looked into when we were looking to cut all of that money was we did an anal analysis of all of this, of the cost associated with the students that we have in different units outside of our district for special needs because we don't have the programs here. And what came back on that at the time was that it would not be financially beneficial for the district to bring the kids back here. Um, that is something though that we will look at again here in the near future because it's enrollment changes and you know, those numbers change too. And one thing that did come out of that was the preschool. Yeah, the preschool. Have, which actually brought back several 
Waterloo kids to our district that kept them here, yes. which kept them, because we had to bus them other places. Correct. We were really responsible that. for educating and transporting uh, students that are preschool age that have learning, learning disabilities. And so we had previously been transporting to three county units, Roots County Field and Southeast. And we were able to work with the county for them to place a unit here, which we get some money off of our bill from the county for the other services our kids get. It's 6000 a year is what we get to allow them to use our facility. And then we save because we're only busing students to water and all of our preschool kids are here. Any other questions or comments? Welcome. Mr. Terry? Yes. Wilson? Yes. Gump? Yes. Fletcher? Yes. Jones? Yes. Motion passes. Recommend to approve the service contract for academic and special education services for a Waterloo student between the Waterloo Local School District and Dragonfly Academy for the 2011-12 school year. I have a motion to approve the service contract for academic and special education services for a Waterloo student between the Waterloo Local School District and Dragonfly Academy for the 2011-12 school year. So moved. Second? Second. Questions or comments? This one now, I don't believe we lose all the money, do we? For this one? Do I'm sorry to hear Do we lose the whole $5,700 to this one? Yes. Yes. We do? Okay. Also charter it. school? Yes. But it's a This is a special. This is a school uh, for students with autism. Yeah. It's, it, it is like a charter school. It's a, but we, I was thinking we, we do recruit a small portion of that, but a very small portion. Not a lot. I just thought it wasn't the whole amount. Okay. All right. Any other questions or comments? Roll call? What's it there? Yes. We'll see. Yes. Go? Yes. Fletcher? Yes. Jones? Yes. Motion passed. A new personnel report. <laughs> the first one here. Uh, we've, I've been bringing to you the employees that we've had in this district prior years from the county that do things just to get them approved to be able to do their services here even though they're county employees. One of those that I had brought forward back, I believe it was in October, um, Lillian Barton was our director of special education two days a week. And, and just to remind how this works, the county, through the way that the state system is set up, automatically deducts a certain amount of dollars from our school district, the county ESC Education Service Center. And then they turn around and provide services to the district with, with that money. So we can't say, don't take the money from us, we'll keep it. So what we did say this year was, you know, we have a need for a special education director instead of a curriculum person that we've had here in the past. So we have this director of special education two days a week. Lillian, who you, who you approved to be here before, left, left the county and went to um, Akron Public Schools right before, or actually right after Thanksgiving. So the county has found a replacement for her. So this is not at any additional cost to us. This is all under that same deal. She's just picking up where Lily left off two days a week. She's a county employee. So recommend to approve the following contractor provided by the Portage County Educational Service Center. Thank you. Now our motion to approve the following contractor provided by the Portage County ESC. Forward, forward. Second. Questions or comments? Roll Yes. Whittlesey? Yes. Well? Yes. Fletcher? Yes. Jones? Yes. Motion passes. Recommend to approve the contracts for the superintendent's executive secretary and treasurer's assistance with a 0% salary increase effective January 1st, 2012 through December 31st, 2012. We actually probably should have had this on last month's agenda. It was an oversight on our part. They, they've agreed to take a, a freeze again for this next year. And we've been doing their contract one year at a time that we have with the other units. Okay, can I have a motion to approve contracts for the superintendent's executive secretary and treasurer's assistance 
with a 0% salary increase effective January 1st, 2012 through December 31st, 2012. So moved. Second? Any second? Any questions or comments? Just would like to extend our uh, gratitude to those individuals for their support to the district and especially uh, mindful of our financial situation. It, it's, uh, it's commendable that they take that personal responsibility uh, to another level. So, thanks. Mm -hmm. This is either the second or third year in a row. I bring them cookies every Christmas just to think stuff. No, know. we don't give them to that. Any other questions or comments? Roll call. Was it Terry? Yes. We'll see? Yes. Gum? Yes. Fletcher? Yes. Jones? Yes. Motion passes. Recommend to issue a substitute secretarial and substitute aid contract to Brandy Franco, contingent upon full and complete compliance with the Waterloo Board of Education and State of Ohio eligibility criteria for the 11 12 school year. I have a motion to issue substitute secretarial and substitute aid contract to Brandy Franco uh, with the Board of Education and State of Ohio eligibility for its criteria for the 2011 12 school year. Make a motion. Second. Any questions or comments? No problem. Mr. Terry? Yes. Whittlesey? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Fletcher? Yes. Jones? Yes. Motion passes. We do have an addendum item for personnel. Like I said, the sheet uh, in front of each of you there should be one item. Thank you. All right, recommend to approve the following substitute contracts for the 2011-12 school year, contingent upon full and complete compliance with the State of Ohio and Waterloo Board of Education eligibility criteria. I have a motion to approve the following substitute contracts for the 2011-12 school year for those listed. Second. We need a little buzzer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions or comments? Roll call. Mrs. Derrick? Yes. Whittlesey? Yes. Gum? Yes. Fletcher? Yes. Jones? Yes. Motion passes. Okay, under operations. Recommend that pursuant to Board of Education Policy 9.24, the following items are no longer needed for school purposes and may be disposed of in an appropriate manner. This lengthy list here that you see, these are monitors, most of which are pretty ancient, uh, that they will dispose of accordingly. On the second page, the weight room equipment. Uh, the football coach recently did some upgrades to the, to the weight room at, at the expense of the football fundraising account that they raised funds <coughs> for. And part of this equipment uh, will be will be used as kind of trading for some upgrades that he that he's doing. So okay, now a motion to uh, remove items no longer needed for school purposes and dispose of them in an appropriate manner. I'll make a motion. Second. So moved. Any questions or comments? I just heard that the the uh, weight room looks really good, and they've done a nice job on it. So maybe you can stop in and check it out. Is there a cost involved with these? Getting rid of them? I don't believe there are. We don't. We don't pay cost every time we do that. Yeah, if they work, there's probably some price at the end. Some organizations will take ancient or not if they work. I think that's kind of how. I think that's what they do. These are, uh, I, I don't exactly know where they take them, but when they get to the point where they're on this list, they, the things that we get here, these computers are, the new ones we get are refurbished computers. And then we, they have a cycle where 
they take the new ones and put them in here, for example, they'll take what's in here, send them down to the next place, and then they just keep getting cascaded down. So uh, you be assured that what's what's sitting for us to dispose of uh, are most of these monitors that are this large and this wide and not have much value at all. Yeah, I'm old, but I still work. <laughs> I think you were. Hey, it's been a long day. Any questions or comments? Not on Steve's comment, but on the motion. Roll call. Wilson Terry? Yes. Whittlesey? Yes. Gump? Yes. Fletcher? Yes. Jones? Yes. Motion passed. I uh, recommend to approve Board of Education Policy 8.141, Alumni Community Use of the Gym and Weight Room. Just a couple words on this. And I think it was September's meeting. We had a very lengthy discussion on what we were being advised from our lawyer and liability insurance carrier, which was that we should be using our, our district facility policy for anybody that wants to come in and use the facilities, including the gym or the weight room. At that meeting, you could ask if um, we could figure out some way to do it where they wouldn't have to have a million dollar liability insurance and some of the other stuff that seemed excessive that were part of that policy. So we went back and explained our situation. Our attorney drafted up a policy, which you had a chance to review and give some feedback on. And we were able to finalize and confirm all of that stuff here within the last or so with the attorney with changes that have been suggested by some of you. So that's that's where we stand. Um, we have the policy as presented to put in place. Okay, and other motion to approve Board of Education Policy 8.141, Alumni Community Use of Gym and Weight Room. Second? I'll second. Second. Any questions or comments? I do have one. Andy and I talked a lot about the last, the second page, item I, where it says uh, the athletic director or designee will monitor and periodically report to the superintendent. I, I'm not a loose end kind of guy. Periodically could mean one week, one year, or whatever. I, I, in my opinion, I think we ought to say it's either going to be weekly, monthly, quarterly, semi-annually, annually, whatever. Thank you. Take a day. Well, with, with that being said, I would suggest to you that we just insert in there, we revise the policy a little bit to state that athletic director or designee will monitor and semi annually report to the superintendent instead of we'll substitute in, in semi annually instead of period. What, what's he going to report? The use, how many people are actually using it. Oh, okay. How many? Yeah. How it's going, if there's problems, if there's changes that need to be made. I'm sure this has been discussed in length with our athletic director. With his yeah, he's, he's familiar with it. So I mean, he's understanding. There's a lot of, I would say, not a lot, but there's a bit of responsibility here. So who's the expert curriculum committee? That would be something that has to be established. So that would be something that we'll move forward with establishing this system. Yeah, I'm not I'm not gonna lie, I, I think some people think that this is probably still an excessive step. And uh, the only thing that I would say about this is, you know, we've recognized the, the board that was here previous recognized this before I ever started because this is one of the first issues that I heard about when I started. And we've we've tried to work with eliminating eliminating it, and I'm not sure that that's necessarily what we want to do. But what I do know is, is that if we leave it as it stands right now. And just have this happening. We know from a liability standpoint and a legal standpoint that they're telling us that it's not right. 
and if we don't do something, then something happens to one of these people. And this isn't something that's frequently happening, but it happens. And if we if we do something, if we don't do something to act, then one of those people get hurt. You know, we've met the legal definition of negligence. If by knowing about it, not acting, then the result of that was something that occurred. So I, I, I can't tell you that this is that people are running around here with smiles about this policy. Um, but that being said, it's something that we need to do. We don't want to have the district being put in it's a It's definitely position. the responsible thing to do. And the good thing is it's not enough. We're not denying them user access to the facility, which is perfectly within you know, bounds of doing that. Uh, because of liabilities, yeah, but we are taking that step. We are just saying, please uh, accommodate our our uh, liability concerns. So I, I don't think that that's uh, out of the, the bounds of, of, of the program. But well, we've had numerous conversations in regards to the issue with the athletic director, with the athletic director about the new policy that we're going to put in place. My understanding is that the school principal was sharing with them on the past and giving any feedback. I have not heard of any feedback at all in regards to this. So this will be something that once it's officially in place, we'll sit down as a group to go through how this is actually going to work, what this extracurricular committee actually is, and make sure that this is actually followed. So this effect, effectively takes place, takes effect tomorrow. Yeah. Um, and somebody who wanted to get a packet because they you know, have packets at the board office. Yeah, we will probably make those available in the school. <coughs> <office. coughs> yeah. I think that would probably be the easiest point. We would get them over to the board office too. It's a difficult situation, and I know Andy and I have had countless discussions about this because you want to welcome people into your school and you want people to come. That's one of the biggest compliments we can get is having an online come back, in my opinion. But yet, you got to go through the, the, Unfortunately, one of the problems with our world is that there's such a, a all the litigation that goes on. And, uh, and so we've got to close that little bit. Well, and I mean, we had discussed in the past about having the supplemental to be able to have someone covering that, but we can't do that now. We don't have the funds to do that. So, you know. I never that. No. At least with all I, 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 no, I, but I mean that was that was one solution, and that just isn't that isn't a possibility. So we've had to spend months working on this to, because of that. So I think that this is probably the best balance we're going to get. Yeah. I mean, we were like I said, we're not saying no. we're recognizing that we want our alumni to be able to come in, that we want we want to be able to to accommodate the community. Mm -hmm. But in doing that, we just have to do it responsibly so we're not opening the district up. And like I told you back in September, the worst thing that I think can happen with me is having to come back to you and say, hey, guess what? I knew this was an issue. I didn't do anything about it. And now somebody's suing the district for this mm -hmm. guy with my money. And I know we're going to lose. Yeah. I mean, that would be a bad yeah. position. Right. <laughs> yeah. So that, you know, so we're just looking at this forward. We'll move forward. you got to have a rule. Yeah, thanks for your time because I know this is taking a lot. Uh, any other questions or comments? Roll call. Mr. Terry? Yes. Whittlesey? Yeah. Gum? Yes. Fletcher? Yes. John? Yes. Motion passes. Uh, recommend to approve advertising for one 72 passenger bus to be paid for with permanent improvement funds. So this is a comment on this. This may seem like an odd request on the night we worry about any time now when we're talking about all of this money that we don't have. But just a little history here. Um, when the building project was done and it was over, there was money that had accumulated off of interest from the project. And the board at that time had some options of what they could do with it. But it all, there was certain restrictions. The board at that time made a choice to take and transfer that money to the PI account, the permanent improvement fund. 
because that option gave the most flexibility with the money. It didn't tie it into the scope of the project that we've done. It allowed other things that fall under the category of permanent improvement. And coupled with the fact that the district was no longer collecting money from any type of permanent improvement levy. So at the same time, they, they designated that you know, the purpose of that money by and large should be to maintain and keep a bus fleet current. So the, we, if we take a look at where our buses stand, over half of our, of our current buses that are on the road are 10 years and more old. And we're, when we made this change last year at this time to, to uh, go to the one bus route, we ended up putting two additional buses on the road when it was all said and done to make that happen. So we've depleted the number of spare buses we have, which at any given time, we need to have some because you never know what's going to happen, what's going to break down. Uh, so we're in a situation where we, we have a regular bus, a 72 passenger bus that our mechanics have been trying to fix, fix and fix. They've set it out, they've done their own stuff to it. And, just continues to be a problem and continues to be something we can't rely on. So what we'd like to do is go ahead and advertise for a regular bus on our own here so that we can have that bus hopefully in place before the new school year starts, uh, which will help our immediate needs. The bus that we're having the, uh, the issues with, we'll probably try to use this trade and get some I have a motion to approve advertising for 172 passenger bus to be paid for with the permanent improvement funds. I have a motion. I'll second. Any questions or comments? Right. Yeah, the other thing I want to mention, in case, in case people aren't familiar with how permanent improvement funds work, we can't take and transfer that permanent improvement money and use it for operating expenses. It has to be five year life. Yeah. General rule of thumb is five or more year control type period on capital improvements. How much cash are you talking for? Uh, uh, roughly 80000 plus. How much is that? I have a thousand. Okay. Any other questions or comments? No call? No call. No call. Eight hundred thirteen thousand nine hundred. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Terry? Yes. Whittlesey? Yes. Dunn? Yes. Fletcher? Yes. Jones? Yes. Motion passes. Okay, we have some commendations here. I'd like to commend Daniel Brandon on being selected to Portage County Team of the Month for December 2011. Andrea Knapp for being selected to Maplewood Career Center Student of the Month. She's involved in the cosmetology program. Uh, Peggy Engelhart continues to meet the requirements to maintain her certified EMIS professional certificate. And we've talked before the importance with that position, how critical the EMIS coordinator is with, with all of this tracking of students and funding and how the money flows and follows. And, and then lastly, we have a number of student athletes that were recognized either by the district level or in some cases, the state of Ohio. Uh, with volleyball, state of Ohio, we had Megan Forney get honorable mention. And with football, the state of Ohio, uh, we had Jake, was it? Um, Zach Williams and Tommy Sabres special mention, along with all of the, the district level recognition. So. We have previously commended them on the PTC uh, honors, but not the district or state. Uh, we also want to point out our boys soccer coach, Steve Knapp, was the Division Three Coach of the Year, uh, and I think our district region area. And then also the OHSAA Sportsmanship and Integrity Award was <coughs> so it uh, yeah, speaks very highly of him. And what he does with that program. We also want to commend Jessica Clapp, Justina Kahu, Jeremy Floyd, Adam Smith, and Ryan Karen for being selected as members of the Kent, Kent State Wind Ensemble. 
what I understand, that's a very selective, selective process. And then our spelling bee and geography winners and runners up at the middle school level. So there's been a lot going on since the last time we met with you know, thanks for our students. So that's all I have. Okay, thank you. Um, under new business, Maple Career Center, still have it. Well, Thursday is the first meeting. The only thing I was getting was when you already mentioned her name, or Maple was student Andrea. Yeah, Andrea, Happy Talk is student. That's the only thing I got from him, so be next month. Um, and legislative update, you probably don't know anything to prepare, do you? Come on, Ken. I have nowhere to go but up. <laughs> that's right, that's right. I didn't have anything in my first year, yeah, as I told you. <laughs> okay. Under other business, anybody have anything under other business? I had about Tim Moore, and I'm glad I said it when I did because he had to leave, so. Um, and. The other thing to tell, I know we said this before, but um, our athletic boosters are the only ones in the in the in the county that do um, that provide uniforms, which saves us a lot of money. I mean, just last year they bought football uniforms, which were twelve thousand dollars. So, um, and they do that every four years for each team. So each team they have a rotating basis where they buy those. So. It, it can get really expensive. And uh, so anyway, if you want to support the athletic boosters, um, they are having a reverse raffle on March 17th. So um, you can see any members. We're very fortunate. We've got tremendous, I mean, our coaches. I mean, we have a great boosters. Our, our coach, and Mr. Knapp, is just a phenomenal. I had the privilege of having my son on his team one year, and he is just, mm -hmm. just a tremendous individual, as many of the coaches are. And our, and our athletic boosters, are, are phenomenal. Our band boosters are phenomenal. I believe the band boosters buy the band uniforms. Yes, I believe so. Which is, mm -hmm. which is like a lot of money. It is. And, and mm -hmm. it's, uh, I forget how many years they were taking. We're just so fortunate in this district to have mm -hmm. those kind of people, those kind of groups. So. And in most of those groups, at least I know in the band boosters, there's about four people that are officers, and that's about how many have show up at a meeting. So, I mean, that's a lot of work for a few people, and it's the same ones. And the athletic boosters, we do have a few more than that, but um, but not a lot more. And you get the same people doing the same work over the time. So it's good that if you're involved in any of that, get involved in it because it, they are really good programs and they do do it. They do a lot for our district, and we're, we're very fortunate for that. But, um, that the music boosters doesn't do a whole lot of, uh, they, not big fundraisers anymore like they used to do an auction. They don't do that anymore. But, uh, that's what a lot of boosters still does this reverse raffle and even I mean you yeah it's a good cause but really it's just a lot of fun so and it's on St. Patrick's Day this year so it should be even more fun so. anyway um, anyone else have anything in their other business no okay five just drive for the night first one is recommended to approve the December minutes can I have a motion to approve the December minutes Second? Oh, sorry. Any questions or comments? Roll call? Mr. Terry? Yes. Whittlesey? Yes. Dump? Yes. Fletcher? Yes. Jones? Yes. Motion passes. The other recommendation for tonight is to approve the November financial statements. I have a motion to approve the November financial statements. So moved. Second? Roll call? Or any questions from this side? Local? Mr. Terry? Yes. Whittleson? Yes. Yeah. Gump? Yes. Bunchen? Yes. Jones? Yes. Motion passes. That's all right. Thank you. Okay, can I have a motion to recess into executive session for matters in, uh, under the investigation of charges complaints and preparing for conducting or reviewing negotiations or bargaining sessions with public employees concerning their compensation or other terms or conditions of their employment. I'll make that motion. Second? Second. Questions or comments? Roll call? Mr. Terry? Yes. We'll see. Yes. Gump? Yes. Fletcher? Yes. Jones? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you for coming and staying. And, uh, 
We don't expect to have any uh, action coming out of the executive session. Yeah. Michelle, is he your right? No. Okay. <laughs> what did you say? Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, Debbie tried that once and he never did that again. 